Alright. I noticed when I had the radio the other side down, this side down rather like this, and I was checking a few things, and I was giving a little push here and there, uh, I noticed that I got a little bit of sound coming out of the radio. Not quite as loud as I would have expected it to be, but I'm hooked up to an external speaker here that I don't know how good it is because it's been around here for a hundred years as well. So uh, that kind of indicates to me that it could be a cold solder joint. Now seeing that this has been in the truck for three years, I don't use it a lot. The truck sits a lot. Uh, I don't use the truck a lot as well. Um, and with the extreme cold weather we've had for the last three years, uh, with this sitting in the truck, it's a small, strong possibility that uh, some of these cold solder joints uh, came into play um, because I don't use the radio that much. Um, oops. So I've opened it up and I did find two cold solder joints over here off the audio chip. The audio chip is usually the one that has most of the legs coming off it if you ever opened up a radio and it's usually on the side you know and there's 10 12 legs coming off soldered to the board that's the audio chip the output transistors are usually either soldered to the back on some of the exports they're also on the side uh, but in this case this is the output transistor over here it's a three-legged output transistor and uh, which is your they also call it a final they call it a PA power amplifier uh, but that's that. So meanwhile, I'm going to look over the board and, and check for any more cold solder joints to at least eliminate that because I haven't got an antenna up um, that will work with this. Uh, nor do I have any dummy loads laying around. I have no resistors, so I can't make a dummy load. I have tons of PL259 connectors. If I had a resistor or a few resistors, I can make a dummy load. But I have no resistors laying around. Radio Shack is no longer in existence. All right, you know, so the only way I can find a dummy load now would be on the internet. Um, they're not much. If I buy a little five-watt dummy load, I mean, for this, that's all I really need. Um, it may cost me seven or eight bucks. It costs me more for shipping than it would for the unit. Um, you know, uh, or I can just buy some resistors and, and make one myself. Again, it's not a big deal. Um, you know, or, well, even if I bought an antenna, that's really not the right way of doing it. It could be done with an antenna, you know, a 50 ohm, 11 meter antenna, but it's really not the right way. You should always work on it through a dummy load. Um, but, uh, seeing that I'm getting back into amateur radio, maybe a good idea just to buy a, a decent dummy load, um, you know, a couple hundred watt one, spend a few bucks because, uh, if I get back into it, I'm going to naturally be doing a lot of repairs, I'm sure. So, uh, you know, gearing up might be worth doing it. Getting some resistors and transistors and some diodes and some parts in here just in case. Anyway, I'm going to deal with the cold solder joints and we'll see what happens.